Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds, and today is Wednesday, April 13th. I'd like to talk to you today about three things that have, uh, have come up in the last couple of, uh, couple of days. Um, the first is that uh, Tokyo Electric has raised the uh, accident severity level to a seven. Uh, the second is some uh, similarities that I'm seeing between how this accident is progressing and Three Mile Island and Chernobyl in regards to um, controlling the information. And the, and the third is I received a lot of emails about uh, what should I do um, here in the States and what should I do in different countries about um, potentially changing lifestyle habits or leaving. So I'd like to talk about those today. But the first one is uh, yesterday, TEPCO changed the, uh, the, the rating of this accident from a five to a seven. And what that means is they had been saying it was like Three Mile Island and now they're saying it's as severe as Chernobyl. Well, I felt that way for almost uh, the, the, last, uh, the last month. And uh, uh, it, frankly, it, it should come as no surprise to anyone that this accident is as bad. There's seven nuclear reactors and fuel pools that are not being cooled here. And there's been three meltdowns and, uh, and an explosion in a fuel pool. So the net effect is that uh, uh, this is certainly a, a you know a catastrophe on the on the level of Chernobyl and has been for the last couple of months, couple of weeks rather. You know it's um, it's interesting because um, before this accident occurred, the worst that anybody ever thought would be one nuclear reactor, uh, not with a meltdown, but with one percent nuclear fuel failed, containment retained its integrity, and and. Uh, this is three nuclear reactors, a fuel pool, et cetera. Um, this is about a thousand times worse than um, ever anticipated by the nuclear planners. The, the second thing is that um, I've noticed some uh, disturbing similarities between the uh, information that's coming out of uh, Fukushima and what came out of Chernobyl and what came out of TMI. Um, you may remember I was an expert in that trial in the 90s. Um, and it, it seems as if um, uh, the, the government and also the people that own the reactors um, begin to uh, try to control the information and, uh, and limit a couple of things. They try to limit the uh, amount of radiation released and they try to limit the uh, effect of that radiation on, um, on people. And then the other thing is they try to delay evacuations until they're, they're, they're too late. Um, I saw that at Three Mile Island and I saw that at Chernobyl. And I see it beginning to occur here too. Now, back on the 30th anniversary of Three Mile Island, I was invited to Harrisburg, to the Capitol, and I, I, I gave a speech. Uh, and it's up here on the website right next to the, the video here. Um, it's, um, it was about what I call the three myths of Three Mile Island. And um, if trends continue, we could call it the three myths of Fukushima as well. I'm hoping that in an internet era that uh, more information will be uh, available to uh, more independent scientists and that uh, governments and utilities don't try to monopolize that data. Um, it's about a half an hour video, and uh, at the beginning of it, you'll hear music in the background. Uh, while I was giving the speech, there was a marching band in a rotunda next to the room. So uh, I, I ask you to, if you watch the video, to um, bear with me for the first 10 minutes for the, the music in the background. Um, right after my speech, Dr. Steve Wing gave a speech um, about the actual health effects of Three Mile Island. And uh, because the, um, the, the radiation releases had been downplayed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and by, um, by the Three Mile Island itself, um, you know, we've been led to believe there were no uh, injuries. Um, Dr. Wing's data clearly shows that that's wrong. And I'm concerned that we're beginning to see the industry circle the wagons and, uh, and, and make that presentation. I, I heard it on NPR today, for example. So. Um, Please be aware that the, the trend of trying to consolidate information is not new, but I think in the internet era we stand a chance to um, to break that. The um, 
The last thing today is that uh, I've had many, many emails from people uh, saying, what should I do? Should I move? Should I change the way I eat? Um, and um, a, a lot of the U.S. government sites are down right now. And I'm not going to attribute motive to that, but I will let you know that um, I'm concerned that we're not getting the radiation data that we should be getting from the U.S. government sites. There's a lot of independent uh, scientists out there that are gathering data, and I think that probably by next week I'll be in a position to better better estimate what that what that is. I guess if you're um, if you're concerned, um, washing leafy vegetables can't hurt. And, um, and, and watching milk consumption can't hurt. But short of that, I really um, uh, don't have any data to, um, uh, to share with you this week. I think maybe next week we will. Now, finally, two things. I promised uh, a, a more thorough review of the Areva report. Um, with events like this upgrade to a seven, I haven't gotten around to that yet. I, I will. And uh, last, but certainly not least, uh, on Friday, um, I've been invited to a two-hour uh, 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 television show with uh, Deepak Chopra and several other nuclear experts. It's going to be um, accessible via the net, and there's a link on this page to, um, to link you to it. It'll be at uh, 6 o'clock Eastern Time um, on Friday. Um, that probably will be the video for Friday from, from my standpoint. And um, I, I hope you can uh, click that link and, and, and watch it. Finally, um, Fairwinds uh, actually has a day job and, and making these presentations is not it. Um, I hope that you can um, uh, look toward that donate button on our page and, uh, and help support this. We're not drawing any salaries for making these presentations, however, keeping up the web um, and, the, and the web presence is, is costly, and uh, I hope you choose to do it. I will get back to you in a couple of days, but let me give you, leave you with one last thought, and that's everybody knows the moment that Three Mile Island and the moment that Chernobyl happened, but who knows when they end? Thank you. The Tokyo Electric Power Company says it has detected higher than normal levels of radioactive substances in the water of the spent fuel storage pool at the number four reactor of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. TEPCO says the levels suggest that some of the spent fuel has been damaged, but most of it has not. TEPCO measured the water temperature in the spent fuel storage pool on Tuesday using an extending arm on a special vehicle. It found that the temperature had risen to about 90 degrees Celsius. That's more than 50 degrees higher than the normal level. The company sprayed water to cool the fuel. It also analyzed samples taken from the pool water to determine whether the fuel has been damaged. TEPCO said on Wednesday that it found 220 becquerels of iodine-131 per cubic centimeter of water, as well as 88 becquerels of cesium-134 and 93 becquerels of cesium-137. The firm says the radioactive materials are usually produced by nuclear fission. The levels of radioactive substances in the storage pool are higher than those under normal circumstances. However, the figures themselves are not so high. Some of the fuel in the storage pool is likely to have been damaged, but the measured levels suggest that most of the fuel is undamaged. We will conduct a more detailed examination. On Tuesday, high levels of radiation measuring 84 millisieverts per hour were detected above the water surface of the storage pool. TEPCO says it will examine the relationship between the high radiation and radioactive substances and also try to find out if there, are any, if there are any other factors that could have raised the radiation level above the water's surface. Tokyo Electric Power Company says radiation levels in seawater near the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are on the decline but remain high. TEPCO says it detected 100 becquerels of iodine-131 per cubic centimeter in samples collected near the water intake of the number two reactor on Tuesday afternoon. That represents 2,500 times the legal limit. The density was down from 7.5 million times the limit found in the same area on April 2nd. 
The decline in radioactivity levels comes after the firm stopped highly radioactive water from leaking through a pit outside the reactor on April 6th. The company released 1,320 tons of relatively low radioactive water into the ocean near the outlets of the number 5 and number 6 reactors for the six days through April 9th. The company discovered 1.7 becquerels of iodine-131 per cubic centimeter in seawater samples taken from a zone about 30 meters north of the outlets on Tuesday afternoon. That amounts to 43 times the legal limit. The firm also found 1.1 becquerels of the radioactive element in seawater samples collected near a beach 16 kilometers south of the plant on Tuesday morning. That represents 28 times the legal limit. Radiation levels at the same spot have remained almost the same since April 5th. And on Wednesday, Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency instructed TEPCO to re-evaluate the durability of the buildings to withstand aftershakes. With series of hydrogen explosions, the number one, number two, number three, and number four reactors have been damaged. Walls came off and ceilings were blasted off. And so the building's integrity is apparently compromised against strong tremor. So there is a need to recheck the durability of the buildings. The government shouldn't just leave these to TEPCO, but should take the lead in repairing the buildings. And at the Onagawa nuclear power plant, the aftershock on April 7th exceeded the largest anticipated quake that the plant was designed to withstand. What can you say about this? Well, the tsunami this time exposed the fact that the tsunami's possible impact on nuclear power plants had been under-evaluated. But another issue is to what extent the plants are ready to withstand the earthquakes themselves. In the March 11th afterquake and the aftershock on April 7th, at the Onagawa nuclear power plant, jolts surpassing the nation's assumption were recorded. The GAL expresses the instantaneous force of tremor. But the government had earlier assumed the maximum force to be 451 gals. But the actual quake was 476.3 gals, even for the aftershock. It was 20 gals over the assumption. Japan has more than 50 nuclear power plants. They are designed based on earthquake-proof standards. So there's a rule of designing, uh, meeting the standard, but the quakes surpass the standard. This is raising questions on the preparations and approach of the government and the industry against the earthquakes. The government should clarify its positions on these issues, or else it will be difficult to obtain support of the public and the local residents on nuclear power plants.